Hello everyone, um, my name is Scott Gilbert and welcome to the first in a series of tutorials on basic electronics. Uh, we're going to have both lecture and labs and um, this first tutorial we're basically just going to be reviewing the the tools, the basic tools you'll need. We'll go over some of the components, not in detail. Uh, all the videos will we'll have videos going into detail on the uh, digital multimeter and soldering and you know all these tools that you see here as well as the components and we'll have labs for all the tools and the the components and uh, but this first video is just basically a review of uh, some of the tools and components you'll need uh, one of the most important things you'll need is a notebook I have a notebook myself and when I was studying electronics instead of searching through videos or uh, through the books to find you know the setup of a certain component uh, I took notes and it was a lot easier to find this stuff in the notebook than it was to search through a video and uh, I don't know about you but I don't remember everything that I see and I'm constantly reviewing and uh, my notebook comes in very handy actually at the end of this video I'll give you a little video look of my notebook anyways uh, let's start reviewing some of the tools that you'll need. This is a digital multimeter. This is not the one we'll be using uh, for our tutorials in our labs. Uh, there's actually another one. I will show it to you. I know a lot of people actually uh, like to buy the exact multimeter that um, that they see in the videos. They just feel more comfortable with it. You know, the ranges may be a little different in, uh, on some of the other multimeters. But trust me, by the end of this course, you will feel completely comfortable with any multimeter you run across. Anyway, so that's what this is. This is a digital multimeter. Uh, this is a solder extractor and you'll see this uh, when we have a tutorial on soldering. Uh, this is a wire stripper. Uh, yes, you can strip wires with um, wire cutters or your teeth. Not recommended, but uh, I actually use a wire stripper myself. Um, some pliers. These are some long nose pliers. Uh, you'll need more than one pair. I tend to use these wire cutters. They're a finer tip for more detailed work getting in there if I need to remove a component from a board. This of course is solder. I recommend non-lead solder. Um, it's a little easier to work with. This is solder wick. It's used in a similar fashion to a solder extractor if you want to remove a component from a board. And uh, we'll show you that. Uh, these are wires with alligator clips on them. Very handy. You'll need some. Uh, these multimeter tips don't fit into the holes of a breadboard. There's, there's, there'll be a breadboard tutorial as well. They don't fit into the holes of the breadboard. So what you do is you use these clips. You clip here on one end. And on the other end, you're going to see these wires that we use for the, breads, the breadboard. And you can actually plug that into the breadboard to do your testing with the multimeter. Uh, these are called helping hands. And this is a circuit board holder. Um, when you're, both of these devices can be used for when you're soldering components to a board. Uh, this is a, a newer model. Um, I'm an old man. I tend to use the, uh, excuse me, I tend to use the helping hands. I don't use the magnifying glass on my helping hands. I actually use a large, you'll see it, a, a large light up magnifier, which is something else you'll probably want. Uh, this here is a soldering iron. This is a an adjustable temperature soldering iron, a very nice one. Um, uh, if you can afford one, I recommend you get one. Um, you, do you need it for this course? No. We're going to be using a regular 35 watt soldering iron. Uh, while I'm on the soldering iron, let me open up something here on eBay. Uh, most of these soldering, most of the soldering irons come with a wet sponge, or a sponge that you actually make wet, right here and they expect you to remove this the clean the the solder tip using this which in my opinion doesn't work very well what i use is one of these guys here and more specifically um, this guy here soldering iron tip cleaner wire it, it this removes the solder it um, you should get about 500 solder points out of a soldering iron and uh, this will actually help you attain that um, attain that goal. This it does a great job, and I strongly recommend it. Okay. So those are some of the basic tools, um, some of the basic components. 
Uh, these are LEDs. These are capacitors. Uh, like I said, right now, don't be concerned if you're not understanding everything. We're going to go over all this in detail. We're going to do uh, labs uh, where we use all these components. They're going to be explained in detail. Both the components uh, symbol for schematics and the component itself. Um, these are different packages. Um, we're going to be using PNPs and, and NPNs, and we're going to be using this package here for the PNPs and NPNs, but you can see them come in this package as well. Uh, N channel MOSFETs. These are seven segment displays. Um, looks like a power diode right here. Uh, of course, we have some resistors. Uh, we'll have full tutorials on all these things. We have a fan. These are some powerful LEDs. Uh, some batteries, of course. These are uh, trim pots or potentiometers. Um, they are variable resistors and they come in very handy, especially when you're creating your own unique circuits and you're, you want to test what the different values are. You don't have to plug in a different uh, bunch of dis different resistors. You could use a tr trim pot. And a uh, way you see these uh, potentiometers, uh, your car, your, your volume controls for your car usually has uh, potentiometers. Okay. Now, okay. So this is these are components, these are tools. Uh, I'm not in the business of uh, putting together and selling kits. So let's uh, review where you can get some of this stuff. Let's go to Adafruit Industries first. Uh, this is one of my favorite places for um, some of my components, especially my Arduino. Um, when we start to do the robotics and we get into microcontrollers. Uh, we'll be dealing with Adreno. It's open source microcontroller. Uh, but right now we're concerned uh, with tools. This so Lady, Lady Ada sells a toolkit for $100. Uh, and if you look at this toolkit, this is the exact multimeter we are, we'll be using. Uh, I've seen this multimeter on eBay for 10 bucks. You can get it here, I believe, for 17 um, uh, all electronics, which we'll be visiting, you can get it there for you know seventeen, eighteen dollars. So this is her her basic kit. It comes with a soldering iron. We'll probably want a different tip on it. Um, it has the circuit board holder. Uh, it comes with solder. I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is uh, non lead solder. I strong strongly recommend non lead solder. Uh, you, you don't want to be breathing in these. There's going to be a lot of fumes when you're soldering. You don't want to breathe them in, or you want a fan to remove the fumes from the area, or a fan and a filter to filter out the fumes. Uh, once again, this is solder wick. It is used for the same purpose as the solder extractor. It comes with wire. It comes with a pair of long nose pliers, uh, so a wire stripper, um, uh, wire cutters. It has some components here, some LEDs, some capacitors. I think those, I think it would have had resistors. These are capacitors. These are uh, capacitors as well. These are electrolytic. Uh, these are ceramic capacitors. Uh, we'll get into details. That looks like it might be a power diode. Uh, and it looks like it might actually have a couple of either signal or zener diodes. Uh, I'm not sure. But anyways, this is a basic kit uh, with some basic tools. It has a breadboard, which is great. Uh, you'll need that as well. You'll need more than just these couple of components, but um, they're good for a good start. And if it has some resistors in here, I don't know if those are resistors or uh, signal diodes. I would have thought she would have given you resistors. So let's assume they're, they're resistors. Let's find out. Take a quick peek here. Yeah, they're resistors. Uh, here's the larger image. Yep, those are a couple of resistors, a couple of electrolytic capacitors, ceramic capacitor, uh, power diode. So she's she's got some components here that will get you through the first tutorial anyways. Uh, she also has another neat kit that I'll mention while I'm here. Let's go to tools. And tools. Oh, $15 for the multimeter alone. I think it was 17 at the other one. This is a nice, uh, it's a little expensive, but this is a nice tool. Uh, it's got uh, wire strippers, and um, it probably has a, a flathead and a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, let's go to Adreno. Later on, when we start doing the Adreno, which is the microcontroller. 
this is a fantastic kit. Um, you can build all kinds of, and it comes with uh, many components. This is great. And these wires here are very, these are what we're going to be using on our um, breadboard. And I'm going to show you where you can get them from Maker Shed uh, without having to buy a whole entire kit. But anyways, this is, this is actually a great kit. Uh, at the experimenter's guide for Arduino, it takes you through. It gives you the code for the microcontroller to, you know, you'll run motors, you'll work with sensors, you'll work with LEDs. Um, she has PNPs in here, I believe, and and uh, so this is this is a very good kit. This is the USB to hook up the micro microcontroller to your um, PC. So that's another nice kit. So feel free to browse around here. There's uh, links down below for all these sites that you'll see. Uh, Spark Fun Electronics is another place. I usually get most of my sensors and most of my wireless from here. Um, you know, we have uh, multi-access accelerometers, um, biometrics, uh, infrared. One of the robots we'll be building uses these infrared sensors to detect uh, the proximity of a person. And I get a lot of the wireless stuff here. Uh, Zigbee's. So they have a, a lot of good wireless stuff here for wireless community, wireless serial communications. Uh, we'll be using some of those for our robots as well. Uh, we, you could go to a ho hobby store and, and get a wireless controller and some servos that are hooked up for it, but we're actually going to build our own. So that's another uh, good website. Um, Maker Shed, as I mentioned before. See these wires here? Uh, they're on sale right now for six ninety five. I don't know if they'll be on sale while you're watching this video. But these wires are great. Y you want these wires for your vet breadboard. Yes, you can take wire yourself, strip off the ends and use them. Um, I just find it's more convenient to have these wires, especially with these, these caps on the end. It, it really helps keep the wires from touching each other and burning out components. Let's go to all, all electronics. Uh, this is a great place to buy the components. Let's scroll down to resistors. You'll need resistors. Uh, let's do a search for 470 ohm resistors. Don't worry if you don't understand what I'm talking about as far as the resistors are concerned right now, because there will be a whole complete tutorial on resistors, capacitors, uh, diodes. Okay, let me see. Four seventy ohm quarter watt resistors. Uh, to give you an example, uh, they are three cents a piece. So if we bought a hundred of them, you're talking about three dollars. Three dollars for a hundred of these resistors. 470 ohms we'll use in line with an LED with a 9 volt power supply so that we don't burn out the LED. So, it, you know, 100 of them, 3 cents each, 10 for 50 cents, or, you know, $3 for 100. Um, so, 470 ohms resistors. Uh, actually, I'm going to start to build a parts list per lab and add to the total parts list. Uh, the link will eventually be below this video. It may or may not be when you're watching this video. Uh, but we're going to build the list as we're doing the lab. So until we actually produce the first lab video, uh, the list won't exist. But once, once we produce it, it'll be, uh, you'll find it down below. So uh, another popular resistor we'll be using is uh, 10K, which is great for uh, pull-down or pull-up resistors when dealing with se sensors. Capacitors. Uh, both uh, electrolytic right here and ceramic. Oh, I don't know what. Ha oh, here it is. Yeah, this is a, a an electrolytic. And these are ceramic capacitors. And so we'll, we'll actually have links to the components that you'll want to buy. Okay, 
so I think we've covered uh, pretty much everything uh, except for maybe the soldering tips. You want another soldering tip? And I think I'll save that for the tutorial on soldering. Uh, I prefer the screwdriver tips. It's a instead of, as opposed to the points, you have more surface area. But I prefer a very small screw screwdriver tip on the soldering iron. I believe they have the breadboard jumper wires. I believe you can also get breadboards here. Mm, yep, here we go. You can get them at Ada Fruit as well. So that's a brief review of uh, some of the tools and some of the components you'll need um, and the places you can get them. And in a minute, I'll I'll add the uh, review of my notebook, which is uh, to me is the most important thing. You'll also want these components. You want to do these labs. It's one thing to hear it and to see it. It's another thing to do it. Anyways, I hope you hope you've enjoyed this video, and you'll tune in to our uh, future tutorials. Thank you. Okay, guys, here's a look at my notebook. Um, you'll see lots of stuff in here from beginner. We'll just scan through some of these things so you can get some idea. You can pause. But anyways, I'm just letting you know how critical it is to have a notebook, uh, especially when we get into some of the more advanced features of electronics. Even some of the more basic ones, like we cover a couple of different relay types. Um, and instead of trying to review these videos, you can come in here, voltage dividers, uh, we go, we do some of the math with the voltage dividers, and I'll take you step by step through. Just a simple AC um, plug, and different kinds of diodes. But even when we get into, say, robotics, you know, when we're dealing more more advanced programming pro uh, concepts with, you know, triggering motors based on sensor information. Um, you're going to want to write out some of this stuff.